You may have wondered, what's all this programmable logic stuff about anyway? To help answer that question, let's look at a history of programmable logic devices to give us some perspective on programmable logic devices, PLDs in general, and field programmable gate arrays, or FPGAs in particular. FPGAs are a subset of programmable logic devices. Here's a brief history of the development of programmable logic devices. The first programmable logic device was a PROM, or a programmable read-only memory. It was invented in 1956, but not commercially available until 1969, followed then quickly by EPROMs, or Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory, in 1971, and then PLAs, Programmable Logic Arrays, in 1975, and PALs, Programmable Array Logic, in 1978. We'll explain the difference between these in this video. The desire to have programmable hardware has been in existence ever since the very beginning of digital hardware. We can realize any logic equation in a two-level sum of product format. Let us denote the AND logic in a format which is easy for us to illustrate the AND and OR planes. To the left is a traditional notion for a three-input AND gate. To the right is the notion that we will adopt for two-level programmable logic blocks, a dot for hardwired, an X for programmable link, and a blank for no connect. As you can see, programmable logic is easy as ABC. In fact, the first programmable logic is a PROM. The PROM has a fixed AND plane, or product terms, which is the address decoding logic. The OR plane, or the sum terms, is programmable through the change of memory contents. This is an 8x4 PROM depicted here. Using this, we could implement the logic function output 1 equals ABC by storing in the first column of the prom the 8-bit word 00000001. Then only when A, B, and C are all 1s will the output, output 1, be a 1. In the same way, we can make the OR plane fixed and make the AND plane programmable. In fact, this is a more efficient architecture since most of the logic functions we are interested in have a limited number of production terms. The following figure illustrates the general approach of a PAL, which has a fixed OR plane, but has a programmable AND plane. PAL devices are very popular, and they're still used in many designs with common part numbers like 22V10 or 16R8. Further development led to CPLDs, which are devices with multiple PALs in the same package with registered outputs and an interconnecting programmable fabric. A CPLD is a complex programmable logic device. You can look at the Altera link on your screen for a more complete history of the CPLD. Here's a brief history of the FPGA. The FPGA industry sprouted from the programmable read-only memory PROMs and other programmable logic devices, PLDs, in the 1980s, the Naval Service Warfare Center funded an experiment proposed by Steve Castleman to develop a computer that would implement 600,000 reprogrammable gates. This began the interest in programmable logic. Altera was founded in 1983 and delivered the industry's first reprogrammable logic device in 1984, the EP300, which featured a quartz window in the package that allowed users to shine an ultraviolet lamp on the die to erase the EEPROM cells that held the device configuration. For many years, Altera touted the benefits of the CPLD architecture over that of FPGAs, but later relented and began making FPGAs as well. Xilinx co-founders Ross Freeman and Bernard von der Schmidt invented the first commercially viable field programmable gate array in 1985, the XC2064. The XC2064 had programmable gates, programmable interconnects between the gates, and therefore the beginnings of a new technology and a new market. The XC2064 had 64 configurable logic blocks, or CLBs, with two three-input lookup tables, or LUTs, which are still important in FPGA architecture today. More than 20 years later, Freeman was entered into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for this invention. In the early 1990s, FPGAs were primarily used in telecommunications and networking. By the end of the decade, FPGAs found their way into consumer, automotive, and industrial applications. 
Programmable logic devices constitute a $6 billion a year business that's expected to grow to $10 billion a year by 2020. Programmable logic is just one part of the pantheon of digital logic devices. This depiction is from Hamblin's book on the recommended reading list. Standard logic has much more breadth than is depicted here. It includes additional TTL families like LVTTL, additional CMOS families like HC, LVC, etc., and by CMOS, BCT, HCT, and so on, as well as differential logic families like ECL and LVDS. Incidentally, all the logic types I just listed can be found in I.O. interfaces in FPGAs, and that's another example of how flexible FPGAs are. Standard logic, programmable logic, full custom devices are also known as general purpose integrated circuits. In between ASICs and full custom are devices now known as ASSPs, which I will describe in a moment. So FPGAs are simpler in concept than other PLDs. They consist of only three elements, a wire, a gate, and a register or flip-flop. The chip is made of an array of gates and flip-flops with wires, that can connect them together in patterns, and these patterns create the logic for larger functions like counters, timers, state machines, ALUs, and even whole CPUs. Creating the interconnecting pattern is the heart of FPGA design, which we will learn in this course. An ASSP, or Application Specific Standard Product, is a semiconductor device integrated circuit product that is dedicated to a specific application market and sold to more than one user, and thus standard. The ASSP is marketed to multiple customers just as a general purpose product is, but it's to a smaller number of customers since this is for a specific application. Like an ASIC, or an application-specific integrated circuit, the ASSP is for a specific application, but it's sold to any number of companies to an entire market. An ASIC is designed and built to order for a specific company. An ASSP generally offers the same performance characteristics and has the same die size as an ASIC. The ultimate expression of logic devices is the system on a chip. Here are two definitions for an SOC or system on a chip, which are becoming more and more common as time goes on. A system on a chip or a system on chip, SOC, is an integrated circuit that integrates all components of a computer into an electronic system into a single chip. It may contain digital, analog, mixed signal, and other radio frequency functions, all on a single chip substrate. SOCs are very common in the mobile electronics market because of their low power consumption. Another typical application is in the area of embedded systems. Another definition for a system on a chip or a system on chip is an integrated circuit that integrates more than one component into a single chip along with a CPU. Typical component types are GPUs, communication interfaces, analog functions, and radios. If it includes programmable logic, then it is a programmable SOC or an SOC FPGA. The higher integration of an SOC provides lower cost, smaller size, and lower power than alternatives. Field programmable gate arrays, FPGAs, are programmable logic devices made of gates, registers and routing wires connected together in a pattern that can be programmed after the device is deployed. Creating the interconnecting pattern is the heart of FPGA design. Programmable logic devices, PLDs, include simple PLDs like PROMs and PALs, complex PLDs, CPLDs, FPGAs, and SOC FPGAs. PLDs are a subset of all logical devices and FPGAs are a subset of PLDs. FPGAs compete with application-specific integrated circuits, or ASICs, and application-specific standard products, or ASSPs, successfully displacing them in many applications. When it comes to digital devices, FPGAs appear to be the future.